again gathering it for the service and we think of the time in the early days when they all come up to Shiloh for the blessings of the Lord and now tonight we have assembled here to, to hear your word and as we have been studying in this certain portion of the scripture that the Lamb was the only one that could open the seals or to loose them and we pray that tonight as we have uh, under consideration this great uh, sixth seal we pray Heavenly Father that the Lamb will open it to us tonight that we are here to understand it and we're no man on earth or in heaven was sufficient only the Lamb was found sufficient so may the all-sufficient one come and open the seal for us tonight that we might just look up past the curtain of time. It would help us, we believe, Father, this great, dark, sinful day that we're living would help us and give us courage. We trust now that we find grace in your sight. We commit ourselves with the word to you. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Good evening, friends. It's a privilege to be here again tonight. Um, to be in the service of the Lord. I just a bit late. I just went to on an emergency of a dying man. Uh, of a member of this church his mother is or just comes here and they said the boy's dying right then so I, I went down to see just a, a shadow of a man laying on a bed dying a man about my age and in just a moment's time I seen a man rise to his feet giving praise to God. And, um, so uh God, if we will be willing to confess our sins and do that which is right, ask for mercy, call upon Him, God is willing and waiting to grant it to us. And now, I know it's warm in here tonight, and, and uh, it's, you know, I guess the heat's altogether shut off, and, and we're... Uh, I noticed last night, or today, <clears throat> this is my seventh day in a room without light. Just electric light, see? Studying and praying for God to open these seals. And there was so many that uh, wrote in that uh, group of questionnaires or questions last night was more or less not as much as questions. It was wanting to have a healing service anyhow. Wanting to stay an extra day to have a, to have healing service on a Monday. And <clears throat> so... Uh, uh, I, uh, I I would, could, I could actually could do it if that was the, the will of the people that they would do that. And you can think it over and let me know. But uh, if you just want to stay and have, pray for the sick, because I've designated all this time completely to these seals and just kept myself away for the seals. So you can think it over and pray over it and then let me know. Now, if the Lord willing, I can... Uh, uh, my next appointment is at uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And that'll be uh, a few days yet. And I have to go home for some business on making a, uh, another uh, convention ready in Arizona. And so then, if it be the will of the Lord, you pray over it and I'll do the same. Then we'll know more about it a little later. And I just detect now. I see you go talk about sickness. There it comes. See, I see this lady sitting right here. If something don't help her, she ain't gonna stay here but a little bit. So then, uh, see, we we just pray that God will. That's what you're here for. Come way away. Yeah. So uh, they, the the Holy Spirit knows just uh, everything. You see, so he. But he, I've tried to designate this time for. Uh, these seals, because we set it for that, you see. But if there's a... How many sick is here anyhow to come to be prayed for? Let's see your hands all around everywhere. Oh, my. Hmm. 
Well, how many would think that that would be right, the will of the Lord, to stay and have us, uh, take Monday night, just pray for the sick, have a healing service Monday night. Would you like to do that? Could you do it? Well, Lord willing, we'll do it. We'll, we'll have prayer service for the sick Wednesday, or Sunday night, or Monday night, and um, pray for the sick. Now, <clears throat> I hope that don't interrupt uh, that the group that I'm going back with, going back to Arizona, Brother Norman, is he here anywhere? Does that interrupt your program, Brother Norman, anything? Brother Fred and the rest of you, is that all right? Eh? That's okay. All right. Then the Lord willing, Monday night, we pray for the sick. Just one night set aside for that uh, altogether, just praying for the sick. Now, it won't be any more of the seals. Uh, for God, let's open these seals and we pray for the sick uh, Monday night. Now... Oh, I've been really enjoying this tremendously. Of serving the Lord under these. Have you enjoyed this? Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Now, we are now speaking from the fifth seal, or the sixth seal, rather. And that takes down now from the, uh, the twelfth verse of the sixth chapter down to the seventeenth. It's one of the long seals. That's uh, quite a bit of things happen here. And now, the uh, tell a little review of last night. Kind of back up a little each time and say, I, I want to say something to you. I found in that box four or five uh, uh, very uh, uh, important things to me. Uh, I was told that, and I certainly want to apologize is the tape song? Tape song? I uh, want to apologize to my minister brethren and to uh, you people here. They say the other night when I was speaking of, uh, of Elijah, uh, at that hour of uh, when they was, uh, he thought he was the only one was going to be in the rapture, the only one going to be saved. Uh, I said 700 instead of 7,000. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I'm sure sorry of that, folks. I, I, I know better than that. It was just simply a mumble of speech because I know it was 7,000. I just didn't say it right. I, and I, I thank you. And I, that means that I'm glad that you're watching what I say. And you see, then, uh, that's because it, it's, it's 7,000. I got two or three notes on it. It said, uh, Brother Branham, uh, I believe you were mistaken. It said, uh, wasn't a... 7,000 instead of 700? I thought, surely I didn't say 700. See? At, uh, and then I, Billy, and then the first thing you know, I picked up another note. It said, Brother Bram, you, I believe you said 700. And one person said, Brother Bram, was that a, uh, a spiritual vision that, that there's just going to be a, a type and you're typing with the set? It puts people on age when you go to thinking these things. See? And it's enough that it puts me on the age. Something happened a day when this seal was revealed. That I had to walk completely out in the yard. Just walk around out in the yard a little while. That's right. It just simply almost took my breath right away from me. See? So, it's all attention. Oh, my. See? Another thing. See, you're laying right on to what I say, and God's going to hold me responsible for what I tell you. See? And so, I, I must absolutely be as sure as all sure can be sure see, uh, of these things, because this is a... A tremendous time that we're living in. Yeah. I was thinking about the healing service for Monday night. That would interfere with you, Brother Neville. Not a thing. Right mm-hmm. there. Yeah, hey, precious yeah. Brother Neville. Yeah. Yeah. They just, uh, they just made one. I <laughs> think <Hey>. lost the pattern. <laughs> hey, man. It's a. He it certainly has been a, a real chum and friend to me. I tell you. The tabernacle now built and got the Sunday school rooms and everything ready in order here. And some of you people that's around here, right, Jeffersonville, want to come to church. You got a nice place and place to come. Sunday school rooms, fine teacher. And Brother Neville here for the adult class and a real pastor. I don't say that to a bouquet to him, but I'd rather give him a little rose now than a whole reef after he's gone. And Brother. Brother Neville, I've known him since I was just a boy, and I, he hasn't changed one bit. He's still Armin Neville, just like he always was. I remember visiting, even he had grace enough to ask me to his pulpit when he was a Methodist preacher down here in the city. And um, we had a nice congregation down there in Clarksville. Uh, I guess that's called the Hard Park uh, Harrison Avenue Methodist Church. 
I think that's where he must have found Judah or Sister Ebba. I remember, of course, she was a miracle. I come back up and I said to the church, I said, that was, that's one of the nicest men, and one of these days I'm going to baptize him in the name of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> there he is, and now he's my chum right along my side. And such an honorable, respectable man. He's always stood by me, just like he's as close as he could stand. Whatever I say, he just lays right with him, hangs right along. Even when he first came in, he didn't understand the message then, but he believed it and he stayed right with it. That's an honor. That's respect to a brother like that. I can't say enough for him. And now the Lord bless him. All right. Now a little uh, preview of last evening in the breaking of the fifth seal. We won't go all the way back tonight. Just back far enough to get the, the fifth seal. Now we find out that there was the Antichrist that rode on and wound himself up from three powers, all went into one power, and rode the pale horse death into a bottomless pit into perdition where it come from. And then we find out when the, the scripture says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God raises up a standard against it. And we've seen it perfectly vindicated in the Word last night. For there was four beast that uh, answered to the the four uh, times that this rider rode. And he rode a different horse each time. A white horse, and then a red horse, and a black horse, and then a pale horse. And we found out those colors and what they were and what they did. Then take it right back into the ages of the churches and exactly that's what it done. Just perfectly. Therefore, you see, when the Word of God blends together, that means it's correct, you see. If I believe anything that hooks with the Word of God is always a man. Now, like a person said they had a vision and said it, uh, it, it was, uh, oh, they know the Lord give it because it come with great power. Well, that vision might be all right, but if it isn't with the Word and contrary to the Word, it isn't right. Uh, uh, they may be present, some Mormon brethren or sister, and they may be some get these tapes. Now, and I don't want to say that some of the finest people I am, you want to meet, but be, be in the Mormon people. Very fine uh, type of people. And then their, their prophet, Joseph Smith, that the Methodist people killed here in Illinois on the journey over. And um, so then uh, that, uh, that fine man, and the vision, I don't doubt at all for what he had the vision. I believe he's a sincere man. But the vision he had, uh, a, a minister came here from a foreign country. And he, and I see him out with, uh, uh, riding around the car with, which is not, uh, with a, a lady. And uh, they come to a meeting. And I found out they drove two or three days, just he and she in the meeting. To come to the meeting together. And uh, the woman had been married three or four different times. And uh, this minister walked up in the hotel lobby where I was and rode over and shook hands with me. And I shook his hand, raised up and was talking to him. I asked him, I said, uh, when you are free, could I speak to you in my room just a moment? He said, certainly, Brother Branham. I took him to the room and I said to the minister, I said, Reverend Sir, uh, you're a stranger in this land. I said... But this lady has a, quite a name. I said, Are, uh, and you come all the way from such and such a place down to this such and such a place? I said, yes, sir. And I said, you don't, aren't you afraid that that'll kind of, I, I I'm not doubting you, but don't you think that'll reflect on your reputation as a minister? Don't you think we should put a, a little better example than that? And he said, oh, this lady's a saint. I said, I, I don't doubt that. But I said, uh, but brother, the thing of it is uh, that everybody looks at her is not a saint. <laughs> that looks at what you're doing. And I said, yeah, I believe you better be careful. That is one brother to another. And he said, I said, the lady's been married four or five times now. And he said, uh, yes, I know that. He said, you know, I, I, I said, you don't teach that in your church at home, do you, for that? So I said, no, but said, you know, I had a vision of it, Brother Branham. And I said, well, that's fine. I said, uh, he said, uh, do you mind? So I believe I can straighten you out a little bit on your teaching about that. And I said, all right. And, uh, and he, I said, I, I, I'd be glad to know it, sir. 
And he said, well, I said, you know, in this vision, he said, uh, I was asleep. And I said, yeah. I seen that. It was a dream. See? And he said, uh, my, my wife said she had been living with another man and said, and running around on me and said, then she come to me and she said to me, oh, darling, forgive me, forgive me. Said, I said, I, I'm sorry I did it. I'll be true from now on. Said, of course, I loved her so much. I just forgive her. Said, all right. And said, then, and said, you know what? Then I got the interpretation of this vision. Said, that was a woman. Said, sure. She's been married and, and so forth and all these times and said uh, that uh, it's all right for her to marry because the Lord loves her so much she can marry as many times as she wants to. I said, your vision was, was mighty sweet. But it was way off the beaten path here. I said, that's, that's wrong. See, you shouldn't do that. So that, see, but when you see Scripture, a dovetailing with Scripture, making it a constant uh, uh, um, continuity, where they come together, the Scriptures, where this one leaves off here, this other one over here comes and dovetails in and draws the whole picture out like putting a crossword puzzle together like you find the piece that fits in there's nothing else can fit it then you're getting the picture fixed Amen. and there's only one can do that that's the lamb Amen. and so we're looking to him but we find that when these this rider he was one rider that rode these horses and then we chased him right down seen what he'd done and everything and found out back in the church ages that's exactly what he did then when he went out on a certain beast and done a certain thing we find out that there was one sent to combat what he did there was one sent for the first age of land of line that was the word of course christ next was the ox during a time of the dark age when when uh, the church had organized and and it's accepted dogmas instead of the word. And remember, the whole thing is based on two things. One, an antichrist. The other, a Christ. Amen. It's still the same thing today. Amen. There is no halfway Christians. There's no drunk sober man. No black white birds. <laughs> no, no. No sinner saints. No, you're either a sinner or a saint. Amen. There's this no in between. You're either born again or you're not born again. You're either filled with the Holy Spirit or you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. No matter how many sensations you had, if you ain't filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not filled with it. See? And if you have been filled with it, your life shows it. Pulls right up to it. See? Nobody has to tell anybody about it. They see it. See? Because it's a seal. Now, when we find those beasts, how they rode each time, one sent out on his ministry in political powers, Uniting uh, religious powers and, and political powers together, we find out God sent out His power to combat it. We go right back and see what the church age was and look back and there it was, just exactly that way. And we find out another age come along and the enemy sent out uh, the Antichrist under the name of religion, under the name of Christ, under the name of the church. Yes, sir. Went out under the name of the church. He, that was a real church, he said. See, Antichrist is not Russia. Antichrist is not that. Antichrist is so close like real Christianity till the Bible said it would fool everything that wasn't predestinated. Amen. The Bible said that in the Amen. last days. Everything that wasn't predestinated, the elect, it says the elect. Now anybody take that word and run it back in your margarine and you see what it means. It says the elected predestinated see? it'll fool every one of them whose names are not on the Lamb's book of life from the foundation of the world when the Lamb was slain the names are put on the book he is standing in the holy place tonight in glory as an intercessor making intercessions for every one of those souls whose name is on that book and nobody knows that name but him he's the one that's got the book in his hand and he knows that last one comes in and his uh, intercessing days is over. He comes forth then to claim what he's interceded for. He, he's doing the kinsman redeemer work now and comes forth to receive his own. Amen. Oh my. That ought to set every Christian to 
searching himself and holding his hands before God and saying, Cleanse me, O Lord. Look into my life and, and let, me, let me see where my bad part is. Let me get it out of the way right yeah. quick. Yeah. For if the righteous be scarcely saved, where will the sinner and the ungodly appear? It's checking up time. And if you would place it and want to give this word, now I don't want to ask me question on this because get me plumb over on another, uh, and, I mean, and write your questions. I think the questions are done and anyhow. This is the time of the investigation judgment. That's right. Now we'll get that on the, on the trumpets when we come to that whenever the Lord provides or the veil. And we'll find out on that investigating judgment when uh, just before the woes went forth and, and we see that that is true. And the three angels that struck the earth crying, uh, you know, woe, woe, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. And we're living in a terrific time. A time that, uh, you see, these things that we're in now, that we're studying right now, is after the church is done gone. Amen. Amen. These, these things are the tribulation period. And I think it ought to be truly settled in every believer's heart that this church never takes a tribulation period. You cannot put nowhere the church in tribulation. I, you put the church there, but not the bride. Amen. The bride's gone on. Because see, she, she has not one sin, not a thing against her. The grace of God has covered her over. And the bleach has stuck Hallelujah. every sin so far away. There's not even uh, ever a member of it. Not a thing, but purity, perfect in the presence of God. Oh, right. it ought to make... Uh, the bride get down on her knees and cry out to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I think of a, a little story. If I'm not taking too much of your time now, and, and it's preliminary, I'm, I, I do this for a purpose. I feel, I, I feel the Spirit just right. This is a this is a sacred thing. It's, see, who knows them things there? Nobody but God. And they're not supposed to be revealed and proved in the Bible that they would not be revealed to this day. Amen. Exactly right. Okay. They was they was guessed at, but now we're supposed to get it exactly the truth. Vindicated truth. Okay. Notice. Now there was um, a little uh, girl in the West that how should should uh, fell in love with a, a man and fell in love with her. As a buyer, the cattle come out there for the Armour Company, and, um, and they had a, a great the, the boss come one day. The boss's son from Chicago, and of course they put them on a regular Western frontier. The the girls there, they dressed up. Each one was going to get this boy. Sure, you know, because <laughs> as a main man's boy, so they dressed in their Western frontier, and, and they do that out west. They just got through one of those episodes now. Uh, Brother McGuire, I think he's here now. They caught him downtown without his western clothes on and they threw him in the, in the jail and put him in a kangaroo court and made him pay for it and then made him go buy a western outfit. I seen the rest of them walking out, guns about that long hand on them. They just go native out there. They're trying to live in something in the back gone days, bygone. See? And then in Kentucky, you're trying to live in a bygone days of the East here. Step back in Renfro Valley and things. You like to go back to the old days. There's something causing that. But when it comes back to go back to a gospel, hey, in the original, you don't want to do that. You want something modern, you see. Yeah. Go show the... See, you, you, uh, uh, there's a... And what makes a, a man do wrong, what makes him drink and carry on or a woman do wrong is because she's trying to, there's something in her thirsting, there's something in him thirsting, and they're trying to quench that holy thirst with the things of the world when God ought to be that quench. He made you that way to thirst. That's the reason you thirst for something. God made you that way so you turn a holy thirst to Him. Amen. Eh? But when you try to quench that thirst, how dare anybody to do that? You have no right to do that. To try to quench that holy thirst that you thirst for something and then and you turn it into the world, try to satisfy it with the world, you can't do it. There's only one thing that'll fill that up, and that's God. Amen. And He made you that way. So this this young girl's put on a, 
a regular Western uh, carry on for this boy when he, he come out and each one of them is sure this go to get this boy. There's a little cousin there on the ranch and she was an orphan. And so she just done all the, the work for these because they had to have the fingernails fixed, you know, and they couldn't wash the dishes for the hands and things. And she done all the real hard work. And then finally, when the boy came, they went out and got him in the old Western style, the buckboard, and they come in shooting their guns and carrying on, you know, and, and acting up. And that night they had a great big dance out there on the on an old-fashioned dance and all the ranchers around about and coming in with their dancing and so forth. And first thing you know, I, uh, this uh, went on was Jubilee for two or three days. Then one night, uh, this boy stepped out to uh, of the place just to rest a while from the dance and got away from these girls. And yet, look, going down towards the crowd, there went a little girl, kind of ragged looking and she had a dish pan full of water. She washed the dishes and he thought, I've never seen her before. Uh, I wonder where she come from. So he just puts in his way to go around the side of the, the bunkhouse and go down there and come back side of the corral and met her. She was barefooted. She stopped. She held her head down. She seen who it was and she was very shy. She knew this great person and she was just a cousin to these other uh, girls. Her, her father was foreman on this big uh, armor outfit. So they kept, uh, she kept looking down. She's ashamed of being barefooted. He said, what's your name? She told him, said, why ain't you out there to the, where the rest of them is? She kind of made excuses. And so the next night he watched for her again. Finally, he's sitting out there and they all got to carrying on everything. He, he sat on the crowd fence and watched for her come throw the dishwater out. And he watched her. And he said to her, he said, you know my real purpose of being here? She said, no, sir, I don't. He said, my purpose of being here is hunting a wife. He said, I find a character in you that they don't have. I was thinking of the church, you see. She said, will you marry me? She said, me? Me? I can't think of such a thing. But me? Oh, see, that's the main boss's son. He owned all the companies and ranches throughout the country and everything, see. Said, uh, said yes, said, I, I couldn't find one in Chicago. I, I want a real wife. I want a wife with character. And the thing that I'm looking for, I see it in you. So will you marry me? She said, well, it startled her. And she said, yes. And he said, well, told her to be back. So now you just make yourself ready. In a year of the day, I'll be back. Well, and I'll get you and I'll take you away from here. You won't have to work like this no more. I'll take you and I'll go to Chicago. And I'll build you a home like you've never seen she said, I don't never never had a home. I'm an orphan. He said, He said, I'll build you a home. Hallelujah. A real one. He said, I'll be back. He kept in track with her during the time of the year. She worked everything that she could do to save enough money at her dollar a day or whatever she had with her board to buy her wedding dress. Perfect type of the church. Hallelujah. <laughs> she got her garments ready. You know, when she displayed this wedding garment the, her, her cousin said why you poor silly kid you mean to think that a man like that have anything to do with you she said but he promised me Amen. Amen. said his promise said I believe his word said, oh he's just making a fool out of you said if he had got somebody he got one of them said, but he promised me I'm looking for it. Amen. Hallelujah. I am too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it kept getting later and later. The day finally arrived. A certain hour he has to be there. So she dressed in her garment. And she hadn't even heard from him. But she knew he'd be there. So she dressed up in her wedding clothes. Got things ready. Well then they really did laugh because 
main boss had sent up to the, to the foreman or, or to, and now the girls heard nothing about it so is this all a mysterious thing to them that is too <laughs> sure is. but this girl just in the face of all of it upon the basis of his word that he'd be back far so they got to laugh and they put their hands around one and dancing around her and said ah they laugh you know like that said poor little silly kid she just stood there not a bit of blush and She's holding her flowers and her wedding garment all fixed. She's struggling. You know, his bride has made herself ready. Amen. She kept holding her flowers waiting. They said, nah, I told you it was wrong. See, he ain't coming. Said, I got five more minutes. <laughs> said, he'll be here. Oh, they just laughed. And just about time, the old clock ticked up to five minutes. They heard the horses a galloping. Amen. The sand rolling under the wheels. Hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the old buckboard stopped she jumped from between him and out the door and he jumped out of the carriage and she fell into his arms and said it's all over now <laughs> left her little old cousin denomination sitting there looking she, she went to Chicago to a home I know of another great promise like that too I've gone to prepare a place for you coming back to receive you they might be saying we're crazy but brother to me right now in these seals breaking like this one of this supernatural thing I can almost hear the sound as that clock of time ticks away into eternity there I can almost see that angel standing there and saying at the last that seventh angel's message time shall be no more that little loyal bride will fly away into the arms of Jesus one of these days to be taken to the father's house Let's think of these things as we go along now. Notice the ministry of the lion, the word, the ox, the labor and sacrifice, the cunningness of the reformers and the, the eagle age coming in. That's to reveal and pick up these things and show them. Now we find out in last night's service also, the great mystery opened with this seal, which was absolutely contrary to my former understanding. Just to presuming that it was right. Always allowed them souls are the altar to be the early Christian martyrs. But we found out last night when the Lord God broke that seal for us, it absolutely is impossible. It wasn't then. They were gone on to glory, come on the other side. And there they was. We find out that they were Jews that would come up during the time well, the, from the calling now of the 144,000 which we get into tonight and tomorrow and, and between the 6th and 7th seal the 144,000 is called and then we find out that they were martyrs that had been killed and yet had not been uh, ex- had white robes on but their names had been on the Lamb's Book of Life and they were given white robes each one of them and we took that and there was nothing in the world, I don't believe, but that bunch of, of uh, the, the Jews has went through a pre-tribulation uh, period. When during the time of this last wars, they were they, they got to be hated by everybody. And uh, Eichmann killed millions of them in Germany. You just heard the trial. Amen. Amen. Millions of innocent people slain. Jews just because they were Jews no other reason the Bible said here that they were slain for their testimony of God uh, for the, the word of God and the testimony to help now we find out that the bride was the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ yes. these had no testimony of Jesus Christ Amen. and we find out that the Bible says that all of Israel the predestinated Israel will be saved Amen. Romans 11 now, we know that. And there we've seen them souls. Now, look how close. Why couldn't this be before? Because it hadn't happened before. Amen. Now, you can see it, you see. See the great Holy Spirit seeing those things coming down through the, the ages and times. And now, it's being revealed. And now, you can look there and see that's the truth. There's where it's at. Now, it was a... It was uh, uh, the martyrs in the tribulation, uh, the pre-tribulation of Eichmann. Now, they only type the martyrs of the 144,000 which were entering into between the 6th and 7th seal. 
And the seventh seal is just one thing. <laughs> That's all. And um, this, it was silence in heaven for a space of a half hour. And now only God can reveal that. It's not even symbolized nowhere. That's tomorrow night. Pray for me. Now, we notice now as we go into the sixth seal. Now may the Heavenly Father help us as we settle down now to this sixth seal. Now, this twelfth verse of the sixth chapter. And I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she's shaken of a mighty wind. And the heavens departed as a scroll when it's rolled together, and ever ends, and in the rocks of the mountains. You know what you notice there? Look at that mighty man. See, what had they done? They had received the wine of the wrath of the fornication of the harlot. See, that's exactly the same class that drank of her wine. See, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that setteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand? What an introduction to it. To see the riders now, the riders, beast, and the answering beast have ceased. Then we take it up. We see the martyrs under the throne. Of this, but from the time these martyrs are the true Orthodox Jews that died in Christian faith, or in, in religious faith because they could not be Christians. Remember, God blinded their eyes. And they're going to be blind for a long time until the Gentile church is taken out of the way. Because God doesn't deal with them two people at the same time because it's very contrary to His work. Remember, He deals with Israel as a nation. Always. It's the nation of Israel. The Gentiles as individuals, people taken from the Gentiles. And it had to, the Gentile had to make made up of all the peoples of the world. So now and then there's a Jew comes into that. See? Just like an like a Arabian and a Irish and Indian and what more. It's all the peoples of the world. Make up this bouquet bride. See? But now when it comes to dealing them with Israel, this last part of the seventh week, He deals with them as a nation. The Gentiles are finished. The hour is soon arriving, and maybe at this, this very night, that God will completely turn from the Gentiles altogether. Exactly said so. They shall tread down the walls of Jerusalem until the Gentile dispensation be finished. The times are over. Yes, sir. And then let him that's filthy stay filthy. Let him that's righteous be righteous. See, there's no more blood on the seat of the of the uh, of the saint in the sanctuary at all. There's no more blood on the altar. The sacrifice has been removed. There's nothing but smoke and lightning and judgment in there, and that's just exactly what's poured out here tonight. Amen. Hey, the Lamb's done left the his mediatorial work. The mediatorial work has been finished. From over on the throne, and the sacrifice, as we've typed him perfectly, the kinsman redeemer, the bloody lamb that come forth, a lamb that had been slain, a bloody one, been killed, bruised, come forth and tuck the book out of his hand. That's the days are finished. Now he's coming to claim what he has redeemed. Hey man, I just sent something through me. We find out now, John said, I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. Then all nature was interrupted. See, God's been doing great things. Like healing the sick and opening the eyes of the blind and doing great work. But we find out here that nature took a tumble. Yes, all nature. Look what taken place. The, the earth quaked. The sun went black and the moon would give its light. The stars shook and fell and 
Why, everything happened. See? Right at the time of the opening of this sixth seal. That's when it takes place. Right immediately after the announcing of those martyrs. Okay? The martyrs have been finished. Now you see we're right close into that hour now. We could be at any time. Amen. See, because the church is just about ready to take its flight. But remember, when these things happen, the bride won't be here. Just remember, the bride's gone. She don't have to go through any of it. This is a time of tribulation, of purification of the, uh, of the church. It's put up on her for her to go through it. Not the bride. He takes his sweetheart out of the way. <laughs> That's her. She done redeemed her. See, it's kind of a, that's his own selection, his own choice, like any man who takes his bride. Now, the earthquake, let us compare scriptures now. I, I want, uh, have you got a pencil and paper with you? I want you to do something for me. Or you want to write, write this, cause it, unless you're going to take the tape. Now we, I want you to read with me as you do. Compare scriptures of this great event. That we will see that this great secret or uh, mystery that was under the sixth seal of the book of redemption. Now remember, these are hidden mysteries. And the six seals all together is one great big book. The six scrolls roll together. And it unwinds the whole book of redemption. That's how the whole earth was redeemed. That's the reason John wept. Because if no one could get that book, all creation, everything was gone. She just simply turned back to, to, to atoms and molecules and so forth and cosmic light and not even be creation, person, nothing else. Because Adam lost the rights of that book. He forfeited it when he listened to his wife and she listened to Satan's reasonings instead of the Word of God. Amen. See? It was far from Then it couldn't go back into the dirty hands of Satan who tempted her out of the way. So, therefore, it went back to its original owner like any abstract deed would do. See? It goes right back to its original owner and that was God, the Creator who made it. Amen. And He holds it. And there's a price. And that's redemption. Amen. There's some price for redemption and there was nobody could do it. Amen. So he said, made his laws, his own laws of a kinsman redeemer. Then they could find nobody. Every man was born to sex. Born after sexual desire. He's in the original sin. Satan and Eve. So he could not do it. There's nothing in him. No holy pope, priest, doctor, divinity of uh, whoever he might be. He was nobody worthy. And he couldn't be an angel because he had to be a kinsman. He had to be a man. Then God Himself become a kinsman by taking on a human flesh to the virgin birth. And He shed His blood. That wasn't the blood of a Jew. It wasn't the blood of a Gentile. It was the blood of God. Amen. The Bible said we're saved through the blood of God. Amen. The child takes the father's blood. We know it. Anything in the male sect produces the hemoglobin. So we find out like the hen laying the egg. She can lay an egg, but if the rooster or the mate hasn't been with her, it won't hatch. It's not fertile. Amen. The woman's only the incubator that carries the egg. But the egg comes, the germ comes from the male. And in this case, the male was God Himself. Amen. That's how I say how up is down and, and big is little. God was so great till He become even formed Himself in such a teeny thing to a little teeny germ into the womb of a virgin. And around there He developed the cells and the blood and was born and raised on earth and from that kind of a start unadulterated no sex desire to it at all Amen. and then he gave that blood because he became a kinfolks to us and he was a kinsman redeemer 
And he shed that blood freely. He didn't have to. He'd give it freely to redeem. Then he goes up on the altar of God and waits there while God holds the book of redemption in his hands and the bloody lamb stands on the altar of sacrifice. There's the lamb to make redemption, make an intercession. Then how dare anybody say that Mary or Joseph or any other mortal could be, uh, be an intercessor. You cannot intercess unless there's blood there. Yes, sir, there's one mediator between God and man, and that's Christ Jesus. That's what the Scripture says. There He stands. And until the last soul has been redeemed, and then He comes forth to claim what He's redeemed. Oh, what a... What a great father he is. Amen. Now remember, now I've always taught that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And the scripture, just like you can't take one scripture and prove nothing unless there's something else goes with it. Amen. See? see, I can take one scripture and say Judas went and hung himself. Take another and say you go do the same. See? But see, it won't blend in with the rest of it. And I thought under this sixth seal, when the Holy Spirit broke it forth there and I seen what it was, then I thought it'd be a good thing to give the class a little something different tonight. See? Because it might be tiring and just listen to me talking all the time. So I thought that we'd do something different. Now notice, this great event was sealed under the book of mystery of the redemption. Now the Lamb has it in His hand it's going to break it. Now let's look to Matthew the 24th chapter, the Lamb Himself speaking. Now, anyone knows that Christ is the author of the whole book as far as that concerned, but this is His, his speech here, or His, his uh, sermon um, to the, the people. All right, to the Jews. Now, I want you to hold your book like this. Matthew 24 and Revelation 6, like this. And let's compare something here just a little bit. Watch this now and you can find out uh, just how, how it is. See what the Lamb here is showing exactly in symbol what He said over here in Word. Do it exactly. So that makes it right. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Here's, here's one He's talking of it and here's where it happened. See? It's just uh, perfect vindication. Now, now let's look at the 24th chapter of St. Matthew and Revelation 6 and compare... The 24th chapter of Matthew, we all know that that was a chapter that every scholar, every person goes to, to, to talk about the tribulation period. Right. It comes out of uh, the 24th chapter of Matthew. And now, let's, if that is so, now before we know that this sixth seal is the judgment seal. Amen. It's the judgment seal. Exactly what it is. Now, see, we've had the, the Antichrist ride. See the church go, now it's finished, goes up. Then we see the martyrs of them Jews back there under the altar. Now, here is the breaking forth of the judgment upon the people who are out of this tribulation judgment will come forth the 144,000 redeemed Jews. I'll prove to you they are Jews and not Gentiles. They have nothing to do with the bride. Not a thing. Bride, we don't see the bride's gone. You can't place that anywhere else. Don't come back again until the 19th chapter of the book of the Acts. Now notice, for the sixth seal is the judgment seal of the Word. Now, here, let's start out now and let's read uh, St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Now, I'd just like to give you something here I've just looked up to find. Now, St. Matthew from 1 to 3... Well, it's where we go to read first. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and His disciples came to Him for to show Him the building of the temple. And He said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be one be left here, one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, and third verse, As He sat upon Mount Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when these things shall be, what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world. Now, let's stop there. These three verses, it took place actually 
on Tuesday afternoon, April the 4th, A.D. 30. And the first two verses took place on the afternoon of, the, of April the 4th and A.D. 30. And the third verse taken place on Tuesday evening of the same day. See? They come to the temple and they ask them these things. What about this? And what about this? Look at this great temple. Isn't it wonderful? He said, there won't be one stone left on another. Then he went up on the mountain and sat down. See? That, that, there's, he starts in the afternoon. And then when they did, they asked him up there, said, we want to know about some things. Now notice, here is, here is three questions are asked by the Jews, his disciples. Three questions are asked. What? What? Um, uh, first, first, what, when shall these things be? When there won't be one stone left upon another. What shall be the sign of thy coming? Second question. And of the end of the world. See it? There's three questions. Now that's where many men make their mistake. They apply these things here to some age then when you see he's answering three questions. They, watch now how, how beautiful it is. Third verse, see? The last phrase there in the third verse. And what shall be first? Uh, they called him to Mount of Olives here privately. Tell us, when shall these things be? Question number one. What shall be the sign of thy coming? Question number two. And of the end of the world? Question number three. See? There's three different questions asked. Now, now, I want you to turn over and watch how Jesus here tells them about these things. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it just makes me... I, I, I get the... What was that word we used the other night? The Stimulation. Stimulation from Revelation. <laughs> Notice. Now, let's turn now to the first seal, uh, the, the seals of this book, and compare this first seal... With this first question and each question, compare it right down and see if it don't run hand in hand, just like we've done in all these others, opening up to the church ages and everything exactly the same. That's the seal perfectly open then. Notice. Now, now we're going to read first for the, uh, then he answered them and, uh, and then he, he's going to start answering them. And we want to compare it with the seals. Now watch. The first seal is Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Now we read 6, 1 and 2. And, uh, and I saw the Lamb when He had opened one of the seals. And I heard this is the noise of a thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Who did we find his fellow of Antichrist. Antichrist. Matthew 24 now. 4 and 5. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Hallelujah. See it? Amen. Antichrist. Amen. There's your seal. See? See? He spoke it here, and here they opened the seal, and here he was. Amen. Just perfect. Hallelujah. Now, the second seal, Matthew 24 and 6, Revelation 6, 3 and 4. Now watch, Matthew 24 and 6. Now let me see what it says. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Amen. All right, let's take the second seal, Revelation 6, 3 and 2. Watch what he says now. And when he had opened the second seal, and I heard the second beast say, Come see, and there went forth a, another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. Perfectly. Just exactly. Oh, I like to make the Scripture answer itself. The Holy Spirit wrote it all. But He's able to reveal it. Now, let's notice the third seal. Now, this is famine. Now, Matthew 24, 7 and 8. Let's get 7 and 8. And Matthew, And nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. 
And there shall be famine, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrow. See, you're coming right on up now. Now, Revelations and the sixth. Uh, now we're going to open the third seal. It's found in Revelation 6, 5 and 6. And when he had opened the third seal, I, I beheld the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld in law a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of penny, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. <clears throat> and see thou hurt not the oil and wine. Famine. See? Exactly the same seal. Amen. Same thing Jesus said. All right? Four seal. Pestilence and death. Notice Matthew um, uh, 24. We'll read the, the eighth verse. Uh, seventh and eighth, I believe it is, on this fourth seal. I got here. All right? Now, what did I read back here? Did I read something wrong? Yeah, I've had that marked. Yeah, there we are. Now we go. Now we go. All right, sir. Now, let's start here at the seventh on this, uh, the fourth seal and on the six and seven and eight on the other one, on the uh, revelations. Now, let's see this. Seventh and eighth of Matthew 24. All right. Now, and nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrow. Now, the fourth seal, as we read it over here, was... Um, uh, the fourth seal was again seventh and eighth on this other now. And when he had opened the fourth seal, and lo, the fourth beast said, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a uh, pale horse. Now, wait, I got this wrote down wrong. Yeah. Uh, now, just a minute. Uh, seven and eight. Now, let's see. Uh, Matthew 24, seven and eight. Now, let's see. We'll get that. That's the third opening, isn't it? Matthew uh, 24, seven and eight. I'm sorry. Now, that opens up the rain or the famine. Right, yeah. It opens up the famine. All right. Now, the uh, uh, pestilence and death. Yes, sir. Now, we're going to it. Seven and eight. Now, that would be the fourth seal. Let's see where we get the fourth seal. And when it opened the four, fourth seal, yes, yeah, a pale horse rider. Death. See? And, and I looked and behold a pale horse and he... Uh, pale horse and his name that set on him was called death and hell followed him and the power was given unto him over the four parts of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth now see that was death now the fifth seal Matthew uh, 24 9 13 let's see if I got this right now again see. and then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you there you are and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And when, and then many shall betray, uh, many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Now, we're on the fifth seal now. And that was last night, see. They would deliver you up, betray one another, and so forth. Now watch here on the sixth seal, six, nine to eleven. Oh, right, let's get that in Revelation six, nine to eleven. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, Lord? Holy, true, does thou judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. Now, and white robes were given to every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Now, I see, under the fifth seal, we find, we find here martyrdom. And under the 24, 9, over here we, to 13, we find also that it was martyr. They shall deliver you up and kill you and so forth. See, the same seal being opened. Now, in the sixth seal is what we're coming to now. Matthew 24, 29, and 30. 24, let's get 29 uh, and, uh, and 30. Here we are. Now, 
Now we're going to get also Revelation 6, 12 to 17. That's exactly what we just read. Now listen to this. Now what Jesus said in Matthew 29, uh, 24, 29 and 30. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, what? When the, this tribulation, this amateur tribulation they went through here, see? The sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall be all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, read over here in Revelations uh, now, the, the sixth seal, the one we're on right now. And behold, when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth, see, of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven uh, fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heavens departed as a scroll as it is rolled together, and every mountain and every island moved out of their place, and the kings of the earth, and the great man, and the rich man, and the chief captains and a mighty man and ever bondsman, ever free man hid themselves in the dens of the rocks of the mountain and said unto the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sets upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb for the great day of his wrath is come who shall be able to stand. It's perfectly. Amen. Turn right back over see what Jesus said here now Matthew uh, 24, 29. Listen. After the this Eichmann case and so forth, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not, uh, shall not give her light, stars shall fall from heaven, the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now watch. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And they shall see, and they sh- and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and glory. And send forth his angels and so forth and with the sound of a trumpet and shall gather them together as the four winds strove together. See, just exactly comparing what Jesus said in Matthew 24 and what the revelator here opened up in the sixth seal is just exactly and Jesus was speaking of the tribulation period. See? Amen. First he asked when these things would be. When the temple would be taken away. He answered that. Next thing Alright, <laughs> How long, Lord, when are you going to avenge? Can you do the Felix and Mariarina? Then so Marabun Chawari, Mahuto la Camagana Rona, the Huto la Matomo, who put all the Huto la Vasella, la Leria Angolona, or Walla Vusupa, then actual Lamupu and Yamadu chapter four. So, what lady verse one by one we could see come home prophet of an Ivan Chakaon. So, ki do me la herna le na ko re le kwa re le bela la ra ibala then e tla tira ro ke re thele jere wa le mo understanding o feta ga re thele jara sa e le bela go bara sa ibala re a le bona morena god bless you a ro pele ngosha and then re tere khone go rapela ka moka ga rena
Rapela the same song. Raimela kama tu kama ka ta betlo rapela. Kuna ma
Pria le go ana morena so re ke tle mafelelong a re re warna wa thapelo so re ka opela kosha ra ber ke mela ka motho ka moka re opela so chaveleng sho a no re lebo ga tshohle ka tapeng Face tomorrow because it is all fear is gone because I know, yes, I know the Until we meet again, God bless you. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. I say 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 
Rejoice, free Rita Bang Morene. 